Good day, I'm Jadif Chiba, and the topic we will be covering today is innovating the property transfer process for a more efficient future. To help us understand the world of property transfer and the evolution that it is going through, let me welcome Clive Bredenkamp from E4. Hello, Clive. It is good to have you on the podcast today. Yeah, th thanks, Jadif. Nice to uh, nice to be with you. We've been looking forward to this and. Uh, where the conversation is going to go. Absolutely. I'm, I'm also looking forward to it. So I think to kick off, Clive, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be part of the E4 company? Yeah, so, so Jadav, um, I consider myself a technologist. Um, I've got a real passion for solution design and solving problems. Uh, I studied at the University of Stellenbosch uh, and got my degree in applied mathematics and computer science. And um, so really technology background, as I said, loving problem solving. And um, after my studies, I, I went to, I had a bursary obligation to fulfill and went to work at ESCO uh, in Johannesburg. And after about a year, I got an opportunity to, to join a company, which is now E4, which was a startup doing exciting things. And so really got the opportunity to go into a blank canvas kind of space and, and solve problems. And that's uh, how I found myself there. No, thank you. And, and, and how did E4 start? You know, so if you can share a little bit more about the E4 company and, and what they do today. Yeah, sure. So, so E4 has been around for uh, probably 23 years now. And um, back in the day, if you think about over 20 years span, the property process or industry has changed quite remarkably. Um, in the, in the late 90s, uh, it was very much still a courier-based system where when banks issue instructions to attorneys to process a transaction, they would draft documents and courier those documents uh, to the attorneys. And um, it really was a gap in the market where, where things have been done manually. And when I joined the business, E4 was looking at securing that communication and sending instructions via email. And um, so that, that's where it all started, setting up the first digital exchange of, um, of information. Um, and uh, you, you'll be familiar with a guy called Mark Shuttleworth. Uh, he started a yes. business called, yeah. called, called Thought, and they, he really pioneered public key infrastructure, uh, where you issue pri uh, public and private certificates to individuals. And, and the gap yes. there was to be able to send this information securely via a, a private key infrastructure. Um, and I could tell you a bit more about that evolution. Um, but essentially, the, all, all attorneys were issued with digital certificates. And I think at the time, and this is dating back to the 2000s, we had the first and largest digital certificate community possibly in the world where we had issued certificates to all attorneys in South Africa. They had little smart card readers back in the PS2 days so that the technology was hard because you had to deliver devices that you had to plug into machines. Um, but the text really evolved from there, from being a secure email system uh, to then becoming a digital switch of sending data now through APIs and eventually building out from there to building um, end-to-end banking platforms uh, on which to do uh, the whole so, so, so Clive, I, I just want to backtrack a little bit, please. So uh, before we go into the, into the tech solutions as such, and you yeah. clearly have quite a lot of expertise in the in the property segment and, and property space. And uh, you started talking about some of the challenges, but don't you want to elaborate on, on some of the challenges that the property transfer space have, have experienced over the last, say, 10, 10 to 20 years? Yeah, sure. That's a big question. Um, you, you know, Jade, it's, it's said of South Africa's property transfer process that we've got a very advanced property transfer process, if not one of the best in the world, in terms of the uh, legislation that protects the buyer and the seller, in terms of the, uh, the details around the process, the drafting of the documentation, how well the deeds office executes on um, registering a property. Uh, the challenge is that it's still paper-based. So while it's incredibly advanced, it's an incredibly advanced paper-based system. And so one of the big challenges is that the, the private sector at the moment provide technology solutions which streamline the processes for banks and attorneys 
and ultimately the man in the street too. But our deeds office is still paper-based. And, and we can go into that quite a bit more on what the deeds office is doing there. Um, one of the problems this also creates is that it's essentially a, a dark hole when you are buying or selling a property. So you were telling me on the other day that you're in the process of, I think, selling a property or, or buying a property at the I moment. I am, yes, yes, considering that. Yeah, and so once you once you get in there, it's, you really are at the whim of your attorney and you only get notifications about what's happening when your attorney communicates with you. And, you know, the um, given that you only transfer a property probably on average one, two, three times in a lifetime. It's a process you don't know very well at all. It's complicated. There's terms that you don't normally come across. And so the whole process is actually quite difficult for the consumer to understand. Um, so that's one of the other challenges, you know, a user is at the mercy of just waiting for information, waiting for a process to unfold, and is not too sure of all the all their interactions happening in the background. Yeah, and clearly there's a proliferation of parties involved in this entire process. So, so that adds to the complexity, I guess. Yes, and, and you know, I think one of the things we, we saw as a business, we looked at the entire process and we mapped it out and we saw that there are multiple interactions between multiple parties in this process, including the Rates mm -hmm. Council, the Deeds Office, SARS, transfer attorneys, cancelling attorneys, bonding attorneys, lending banks, cancelling banks, uh, it's a whole myriad of transactions and each one of those are essentially value chains which can be optimized by technology to really improve you know number one the turnaround time of a registration but also to be able to use that data to get better insights into what's actually going on in the transaction yeah you you clearly are, are, are quite insightful about the property environment and 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 you you deeply experience in it and you also come across as a as a visionary in terms of you know building capability so tell me a little bit about the kind of solutions that e4 and and you've 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 put forward into the market yeah so i think i think when we last looked we 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 have about 66 solutions in total that are parts of the value chain and and um I won't tell you about all, all 66 of those, but uh, essentially if we go back to uh, what we were talking about earlier and where E4 started with the sending of secure emails, that then evolved to secure APIs, which were more real-time. You know, the problem with email is it's so unreliable. Emails get delivered, they go into junk mail, they disappear. Someone could impersonate an email recipient or sender quite easily. So it quickly evolved from there to being a secure digital switch, also secured by public key infrastructure. And then once we started doing the secure delivery of instructions from banks to attorneys, we saw that there's a lot of work that is done manually by the attorney outside of that. And so we started to expand our platforms into automating a lot of what the attorney does. And then also a lot of what the mm -hmm. bank does and start, started tying those parties together, which then evolved into what I call platforms. And platforms are where you could then execute an end-to-end -end function like a bond registration, a transfer, all on one end-to-end -end platform where both the parties work on the same tech. And then, um, yeah, maybe you want to interject there. No, 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 please, please continue. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've got, you've got more solutions you can talk about. It's part of that, that full value chain. Yeah, so, so I think, um, you, you know, once, once we go from there, we, we then move on to what we call ecosystems. And that will be, you know, the future of where we're going, where, where as a buyer or seller, you, you come and become part of an ecosystem where you've got all these parties transacting, which there are anywhere from 12 to 20 different parties. If you include all your compliance certificates and all those things you need to do, um, you really can get onto an ecosystem, a data-driven ecosystem, which gives everybody the kind of transparency they need from, from this kind of process. Um, we, we also quite keenly watching what's happening with the deeds office. Um, so as I said earlier, the deeds office is very advanced, but paper-based. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a project called the EDRS, which is the Electronic Deeds Registry System. And that's okay. in the works of being developed. And, and it's been in the works for many years. And we've seen of, of late evidence that the deeds office is moving forward now with the ability to receive documents electronically. And once you can receive electronic documents, you then start working with data instead of paper, which then unlocks a lot of power for automation and transparency. Yeah. So, so maybe just to kind of 
fast forward, say over the next five years, you know, so so what do you what do you think the transfer process is going to look like, and then how much of that do you think will be digitized over the next five years? Yeah, sure. So um, if if we look at broad numbers, you know, eighty five to ninety percent of home loans currently touch E four software. So mm. we, we've got a good we've got a good fr- footprint of our tech enhancing processes broadly. If we look at what's going to change in the next few years, um, and, and let's say a five year horizon, um, a lot of it hinges on EDRX and, and the steps that these offers are going to take. The, as I said, the moment the DS offers become electronic, it opens up the ability for, for much faster processing. The, the time through the DS office is sitting at around about 10 to 11 days of, of turnaround time. And the average home loan takes about 60 to 90 days to process. So that time will come down. Um, and so we, we're really going to see in the future much faster turnaround. And there's no reason why we can't get down to, uh, to two, three weeks for a property to register, which First of all, for the banking industry, means faster recognition of revenue from interest they can earn, but also for the homeowner to be able to move into your prop- property sooner. And then with that, much more predictability about when that property will register so you could plan your move, you could plan the accompanying services uh, much easier. Um, so it's really a world where also everything gets automated. Uh, you know, right now we already automatically generate all the documentation needed for a home loan from the data. Those documents are then currently electronically signed by attorneys. And then when those documents come back in, we also automatically extract the data from those documents to verify the data is correct. Now that's all automation and can happen overnight, can happen, you know, humans get tired, people don't. And so that that processing power that does things in real time really has the ability to speed up uh, the time it takes to register. And then the, the last point, just in terms of where we're going to be in five years' time, the, the industry is ripe for a digital ledger. And, and by that, I mean a, a, an electronic deeds registry that is able to track the ownership of a property digitally and not rely on a title deed document that then is in transit and sits in somebody's possession, which is vulnerable to being corrupted, stolen, lost. Uh, so the moment we get an open, transparent digital ledger, we really secure ownership for individuals that they could rely on the tech, the public open access API tech that's going to enable an owner of a home to have confidence that uh, the investment is secure and they are indeed the owner of a title deed. And, and do you think we'll get there in the five-year period or it's going to go beyond that? Jadev, that question has been asked so many times around uh, the, the timelines for EDRS, it all hinges off there. You know, I think if, if we, once again, if we look at the private sector, technology has advanced so quickly and, and we, we can do so much, but you could only be as fast as the, the slowest part of the process. And I think um, while the DS office is really good at what they do, uh, the fact that documents have to go from digital to paper and back is the major stumbling block. And once we overcome that, uh, like I said earlier, it opens up capabilities that all these processes can take place uh, almost overnight. Look, look. I guess the big plus is that the uh, the process has definitely been digitized to quite a quite a large extent. So, definitely seeing improvements in that, and and that's just going to contribute to a, getting to a longer term solution a lot faster. I guess. Um, maybe just to segue away to do something else. In, you know, what what is the impact of COVID? have on the industry. We've come out of COVID now, you know, things are, are settling back to normal, but what did the, the impact, what did COVID have as an impact on the industry? And also now we're starting to see the, the hike in interest rates. So, so how is that impacting the, the industry at large? Yeah, so we, we, we saw immediately, if we think back to, I think it was 26th of March, 2020, was when everything suddenly shut down. I'll remember that date. <laughs> I remember where we were sitting. I remember all those conversations at the time. Um, I think for us as a business, the immediate impact was a drop to zero of all the volumes. You know, we're a transaction-based business. And the moment that happened, uh, because of the nature of how 
banks, attorneys, and, and clients were interacting, it was all face to face and in person. You know, you'd go into it, an attorney's mm. office to sign a document. Uh, the bank users would be sitting in a bank issuing out instructions. So volumes literally dropped to zero overnight, and there were no instructions going through, which meant obviously massive delays in terms of property registrations. Um, but what it yeah. did do is it, it drove the adoption of web based tech quite dramatically. It meant, for example, bank users who needed to sign a guarantee document guaranteeing a cancelling bank that they would get their funds were not able to sign those documents because they couldn't get into their office to go and sign those documents. So suddenly there was a need now for those guarantee documents to be signed by the bank user in the comfort of their home. So that, that tech came in. And then also the rapid adoption of electronic, electronically signing bond documents where all of a sudden people didn't want to touch pieces of paper and share things and <coughs> next to each other. You know, you now have the ability to, to digitally sign a document. And so, yeah, I would say rapid adoption of touchless technology. Um, and, you know, if you think as, a, as, a, as a, a business, you want to be able to collaborate with your colleagues. But in terms of being a service provider, you want to be able to provide those services conveniently from wherever. And so now with web-based tech, which, which all our tech is, you're able to use E4 systems from wherever you are in the world, uh, the comfort of your home, on the golf course, sitting in Mauritius, wherever you are, uh, you're able to use that tech and provide that service. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, the, the evolution that, that E4 has gone through and, and the fact that COVID has almost forced digitalization across the board, you know, it's, that mm. acceleration. So I guess that's been the big plus out of, out of COVID for, for the industry. Yes, indeed. It's, it's given, it's given a, uh, it's lowered the barrier to adopting web-based tech versus tech that sat in your office mm -hmm. uh, wherever that was based. Yeah, maybe just a, a couple more pointers um, that I wanted to cover. Um, clearly, there's lots of benefits for m most of the stakeholders that are participating in, in this process. Don't you want to elaborate on, you know, what, what kind of benefits would, for example, the buyer, the seller, you know, the various stakeholders gain out of, out of a digitized process? Mm, yeah, great question. So one, one, of the, one of the evolutions we've seen um, is I, I spoke earlier about coming into an ecosystem. And then the next area we see that's going to improve is for the, the man in the street, the buyer or seller of a home, to be able to get onto a home loan experience, which is a platform where they can get transparency on what's happening with their sale. So we're looking at that, that the, the user can come onto a platform, they could have a place to automatically upload their documents, their ID books, et cetera, start interacting with the various parties or just being a spectator on the transaction. You know, if they want to know how's my transfer GD receipt going with SARS, they'll be able to see the audit trail of what's happening there. I think the, the, the other big challenge to the industry, which, which we didn't cover earlier that we, we, we're solving now is, the, as I said earlier, the reliance of email, the reliance on email is risky and the impersonation of email is a challenge. So when it comes to security, there have been many, number one, breaches of data, but number two, impersonation where bank account details are given to a client to deposit their funds into a bank account and somebody's impersonating that attorney. And so yeah. the secure communication between the man in the street and the attorney is the next <coughs> Thing to overcome and so by inviting the man in the street onto a platform we provide a secure channel where the man in the street can interact with the attorney exchange bank account details know that the bank account details they're receiving from the attorney are verified backed up by a digital certificate and are indeed secure yeah, i mean I've, I've come across a number of examples of of these fake identities and money is being transferred or, or deposited and 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 it's been months and months for the poor individual who's trying to purchase this property to try and just rectify that problem. So clearly, you know, these kinds of solutions are going to help. And it, I think it's a, it's, it's a good lead into data privacy and, and, and security. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, and I think you've mentioned some of it already, maybe talk a little bit more about how the security and data privacy is managed in this, in this process. Yeah, so I think, you know, we, we've adopted the, the approach of a business as uh, security first. You know, we sit on 
an mm. incredible amount of sensitive data. If you think, going back to your uh, potential purchase that you're doing or sale, I, I can't remember, you are volunteering a whole lot of sensitive information that you don't normally share with anybody. And knowing sure. that that's yes. it, it's, a, it's a major risk for you. So uh, we adopt approach of security first. We need to make sure that the data we look after in transit between a bank and an attorney or the, the man in the street and the attorney is secure, stored in an encrypted way, so that even if those physical devices get stolen, if the physical service gets stolen, that data is always encrypted and cannot be accessed in any way. So it's a huge responsibility, and we, we take it very seriously. We have, a, we have a whole division of security that looks after how data is stored, how it's encrypted, what's, what's transmitted where. Um, and then, of course, we also have the requirements of Poppy, which, which makes sure that we have to handle data in a proper way. Uh, also allowing a user to ask for their data to be expunged from a platform, uh, which is a challenge for many organizations. You know, it's easy to collect data. It's harder to mm, you get rid of it is hard. data when somebody asks you to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that's a, a business like ours that sits on years, 20 plus years of property transaction data. Uh, it's, it's our number one priority. Clive, thank you very much for your time today. I, I think we, we've covered quite a lot, and, and thanks for, for sharing you know, how the property transfer process has evolved over the last few years. I don't know if you have any final closing comments before we, we end the podcast today. Yeah, I think, Jade, just first of all, uh, thanks for the chat. I look forward to, to having another chat in, a, in the next while to talk about some more of the, the tech that we're rolling out in the property industry. Um, I think, you know, the closing comment is, you know, with a view of South Africa and uh, the, the common sentiment that we have such an advanced banking system and we have such an advanced property transfer process, albeit paper-based, uh, we've got some incredible tech in this country that's very exportable to the rest of the world. And uh, we're doing great things in South Africa to advance the security, the transparency and the ease of property transfer. And I think... Um, there's a lot that can be shown to the rest of the world in terms of how we're doing things in South Africa. Okay. Clive, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Great chat. We'll chat soon. Nice to chat. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.